What's up guys? Today I've got a brand new foam dart blaster to show you. This here is called the Lynx. And it's a 3D printed blaster designed by Orion Blasters based in the USA. There's quite a lot of people licensed to print and sell these. So I'll leave a link down below to Orion Blasters website where they've got a page dedicated to showing you everywhere that you can buy one of these. This one here was printed by Piggy in Singapore. For you Australian viewers out there, he's probably the closest one to us. So I'll leave a link to his Facebook page in the video description as well. Now, being a Nerf blaster, I don't have to keep this in a gun safe. In fact, I can keep it up on my wall right behind me. There's no laws about Nerf in Australia, so you can just use this wherever you like. The Lynx is about a third the cost of my current favorite blaster, the Sabre M20 up there. And although this is weaker being 3D printed, I could have three of these for the price of one Sabre. So if you drop this, it probably would break, but you'd be able to afford three of them in case that ever happened. This makes the Lynx more appealing, in my opinion, to people just getting into the hobby who haven't got a Nerf Blaster yet and just want to try one out. These are super accurate and using it against gel blasters, for instance, this will hit the target a lot more accurately than one of those. Aside from 3D printed blasters like this being more fragile to dropping or knocking them against something out on the skirmish field, you also have to be careful not to leave them in hot environments like your car, or they will warp from the heat. But if you look after your links and treat it properly, you should have no issues at all. The unique bullpup design of the Lynx is the main reason I decided to get one. Just look at the difference in length here. They actually have identical length barrels in them. Also, the mechanism used to make this blaster work is very different than anything else I've ever seen. So I just wanted to check that out as well. In this video, I'll go over the Lynx itself. I'll chrono the blaster with a few different springs. I'll check the accuracy of mine, and then I'll use it in some gameplay. Let's get started. The Lynx is a bullpup mag-fed manual spring-powered blaster. It can be completely taken down without any tools. Most of it is just pins that you push out, and it also features slam fire. In order to be bullpup, it actually functions in quite a different way than other spring-powered blasters. When you pull back on the front shotgun grip, the spring is compressed like in any other spring-powered Nerf blaster, and the breech opens to allow a dart to feed up from the magazine. But when you slide it forward again, the entire piston assembly, along with the spring and the catch, move forwards to the front of the cylinder, and that's also when your dart's chambered into the barrel. When you pull the trigger, the piston fires backwards and all the air is directed through that U-shaped bend onto the dart, which is then pushed out of the barrel. All this happens every single time you cock and fire the blaster. The Lynx is designed to work with the Talon mags from the company Worker. This one here is one that I cut down myself to hold only 10 shots, but most of the time I'll use this one, which holds 20 shots. It also only fires half-length darts, such as these ones from Adventure Force. I don't know why you'd ever want to use full-length darts, though, because half-length darts are a lot more accurate. Also, another cool thing about the Lynx is you can insert the mag at any time. It doesn't have to have the breech open like most other springers. So right now I can shove it in, or when the breech is open, you can also still insert and remove it. The Lynx doesn't come with a shotgun grip attached. Instead, it just has the bare Picatinny rail at the bottom there. So you can choose your own grip that goes onto Picatinny, such as this one I bought from a gel ball store. You also get a Picatinny rail up top where you can attach a scope or a red dot sight. I'm just using the Novridge one to four times low power variable optic. I definitely would recommend using some kind of sight, whether that's red dot or crosshairs like this, because Blasters like this can shoot out to about 70 meters. So it's definitely worth adding a sight on here. Now the barrel that the Lynx comes with is a little loose fitting on the darts. So for best performance, I've swapped mine out for a 13 millimeter internal diameter barrel from Sabre. It'll actually take any barrel with a 16 mil outer diameter. This one with 13 mil inside is actually tighter. 
so it should give better performance. The Sabre barrels also have internal rifling built in, so you don't have to add a scar barrel or anything like that. These are actually my favorite scar barrel that you can get because it's all built into the barrel. The Lynx has an air volume slightly higher than a long shot, about the same as a Talon Claw and less than an M20 construct. So this 50 centimeter M20 construct barrel, I actually cut down to 40 centimeters. By cutting this down to 40 centimeters, it does mean the barrel actually ends within the handguard of the Lynx. It's not an issue at all though, because the darts don't hit the inside of the handguard on the way out. It just doesn't look as cool as if the barrel stuck out. But I did try longer barrel lengths and the 40 centimeters definitely gave the best performance in the Lynx with that air volume. The Lynx is really easy to service and I'll just show you quickly how to change the barrel first of all. So there's these grub screws, there's one on each side below the Picatinny rail. As you loosen that, there's a nut inside. So don't loosen it all the way or the nut's gonna fall out when you pull the barrel out. But you just loosen it a bit and the barrel comes out perfectly smoothly. Now chuck the saber barrel in. There's two O-rings inside of there and you'll feel once it's pushed through both of them. And then just tighten your grub screws. And now I'll just quickly show you how to change the spring. So remove this front pin, slide the top rail off along with this metal rod, unhook this metal rod from the priming grip and pull it out of the cylinder. And now you can tip it forwards and get your spring out. I'm not gonna change this one over for now, but if you swapped it to a different spring, you'd then just do it all in reverse. Put this back in, get those two metal rods inside of it, and then lift this up so it can go over the pump grip. Put the top half of your front handguard back on and push the pin in. There we go. Now, my Lynx from Piggy came provided with a cut down K18 hardware store spring, but the Lynx is also compatible with any long shot springs. So these are all the ones from Turf Blaster Springs made specifically for the long shot. And these are gonna give you the best performance compared to those hardware store springs. Now I just quickly go over slam fire. If you hold the trigger in, pump the blaster back, as soon as you pump forwards again, it will immediately fire. Now that would be something that's handy in CQB if you just wanna spam shots at someone. It's not something I would personally do though, it's just not as accurate as taking the time to aim. But luckily, if you're not a fan of slam fire, you don't have to use it. Just keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. It does mean though that once you've cocked the blaster, there's no way to deprime that. So you're gonna to wanna to load a dart in and then fire it or put your finger over the end of the barrel and fire it so that you don't damage any of the parts from dry firing. Now that's it for my overview of the Lynx. Let's talk chrono numbers. First of all, what you probably want to see is the strongest spring I have for it, the 18.5 kilo long shot spring. This was averaging 300 FPS and it had a high of 315 and a low of 280. Additionally, I fired about 200 shots out of this and so far it's held up fine. So the durability with 18.5 kilos seems to be absolutely fine. But now let me show you the spring I'll personally be using in this and that's the one that's in here right now the Turf 16 kilo long shot spring. The 16 kilo long shot spring shot the most consistent FPS out of this. I think it might be optimized for that 40 centimeter barrel, but I was getting an average of 269 FPS, but I got a high of 275 and a low of 261. The 16 kilo spring is also much easier to cock than the 18 and a half. So you won't have as sore of an arm by the end of the day but it's still heavier than any of the Sabre M20 primes. But that's the benefit of having linear guide rails and a much higher air volume. So now I'll step down to some weaker springs. Just keep in mind, I think the 40 centimeter barrel or the tight rifling on it might be too much for those weaker springs. Although you will be able to see how low the FPS can get. So the stock K18 spring that Piggy provided with this got an average of 209 feet per second, high of 235 
and low of 198. Although with the stock barrel that he provided with it, it was shooting a little higher than that. The next level down from the K18 seemed to be the Turf 10 kilo spring. It shot at an average of 199, high of 230, and a low of 179. The Turf 8 kilo long shot spring shot an average of 186, high of 195, and a low of 173, which is pretty much what it shoots out of a long shot. And now for the weakest spring that I have. The Turf 5 kilo long shot spring shot an average of 143, high of 155, and a low of 122. I'll put all of those numbers up on the screen for you to have a look at, although I think the 16 kilo spring shot the best out of all of them. The 18 and a half also shot a little above the 300 FPS cap we have, so I probably wouldn't be allowed to use it anyway. So saving my arm a little bit of pain by the end of the day, and also probably having better accuracy with the 16 kilo. Speaking of accuracy, let's head outside and take some shots at a 30 meter distance against a one meter diameter target. Let's see how accurate this shoots. As you'd expect from a foam dart blaster, every shot from 30 meters away was a hit on that one meter diameter target. So now let's wrap things up and then I'll end with some gameplay. So the Lynx is a uniquely bullpup blaster, which allows it to be significantly shorter than other spring powered blasters on the market. It can take a variety of different 16 mil outer diameter barrels, such as the Sabre M20 barrel that I'm using in mine, it can also take a variety of different springs, including the entire turf long shot spring lineup. With my particular setup, I was able to get it to shoot an average of 300 FPS, all the way down to an average of 143 FPS, with everything in between, depending on which spring I used. These numbers are of course with rifling, which does add a little bit of friction and reduce the velocity by about 10%, but I definitely think rifling is worth it on nerf blusters. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of 3D printed blasters anymore, although this one seems durable enough to hold up to that 18.5 kilo spring. While I wouldn't recommend dropping the blaster or leaving it in sweltering heat to warp, being one third the cost of an M20 construct, you could easily buy three of these and replace them. The strength required to cock it versus the performance output is a little bit worse on the Lynx than the M20 construct, but that's all down to the smaller air volume of the Lynx. It is better than a Cedar, Prophecy, or any of the Adventure Force blasters by a mile, and even slightly better than a long shot though. 269 FPS out of a 16 kilo spring, I'm quite happy with. 
my old ex Zeus blasters used to shoot a little lower than that with their 16 kilo springs. So I would happily use this for an entire day of skirmishing. Speaking of actually using the links, let's head outside and I'll end the video with some gameplay. As always, thanks for watching guys, make sure you subscribe for more content, and I'll see you on the next one. Justin was mighty upset when I told him that um, CNC box wouldn't fit in that day night. A hit. That's a hit! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hit! Ah, crap. Got him! <laughs> oh! Good shot. <laughs> did, I'm sorry, did I hit you? Yeah, you hit me here. Ah! You got me as well! <laughs> Sorry, was that in your oh, mouth? No, <laughs> was that in your jaw? It's so good. <laughs> Is he still in the top corner? Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh. <laughs> okay. Got me. Behind the behind the drum, wooden crate. He's out. Got his arm. I'm going up. As soon as is it clear. It's clear, I'm going up. Oh he's hit! Going up.
You got me too.